Good afternoon, and uh, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us for this uh, extremely important announcement. Uh, I'm Christopher Maxwell, President's Chief Executive Officer of the Rhode Island Truck Association, which represents approximately 3,500 transportation and trucking professionals throughout the state of Rhode Island. We're a local affiliate of the Northern Truck Association, which represents a nationwide interest of over 30,000 dollars. On behalf of my constituents, I'd first like to thank ATA President Chris Spear and the ATA team for their unbelievable support and defense of the interests of Rhode Island trucking interests of the Rhode Island business community. Chris came here two years ago when he first began his tenure at ATA, about to leave Rhode Island bloody and burned. against the Rhode Island Department of Transportation. The lawsuit details with great clarity how Governor Raimondo's World War's only tolling scheme is a blatant violation of multiple constitutional provisions designed specifically to protect interstate commerce. We've maintained since day one that truck only tolling, that the truck only tolling component of Roadworks is unlawful and this comprehensive lawsuit offers unequivocal proof of that. The Raimondo administration, Speaker Mattiello, and RIDOT Director Alvedi force-fed roadworks into the legislation with misleading and inaccurate propaganda. Perhaps another example of being misguided by poor legal advice, the Raimondo administration implemented truck tolls with tremendous arrogance and reckless disregard for Rhode Island taxpayers and the business community who will ultimately get stuck paying the bill for this ill-conceived tolling scheme. In short, Roadworks was conceived and designed, constructed, and implemented with the intent of placing a weighted bur financial burden on out-of-state carriers. This is blatantly unlawful and violates the Commerce Clauses of the U.S. Constitution. Additionally, Roadworks places no approximate cost for the shared financial burden for road use by all vehicles. Evidence of this ignorance is woven into the Roadworks plan, as well as all the skewed studies and documentation right out has produced over the past three years. Our lawmakers and public officials have echoed a bold and uninformed narrative. They boasted about the protection local commerce and businesses will derive, at the same time targeting out-of-state trucks passing through Rhode Island. Again, this is not allowed under the U.S. Constitution. Much of the incriminating public commentary by Governor Raimondo, Speaker Mattiello, and RIDOT, Director Alvedi, are cited in this lawsuit as irrefutable evidence of their illegal and misguided intent. Now, to conclude some details. The suit was filed at noon today in the United States Dr District Court for the District of Rhode Island, with Peter Alvedi as defendant in his capacity as Director of RIDOT. Co-plaintiffs for the suit, in addition to ATA, are Cumberland Farms Incorporated, m and Transportation Services Incorporated, and New England Motor Freight. ATA has retained the firm Mayor Brown, a DC and internationally based and well-regarded firm with long-term record of success in commerce issues. Local counsel who filed the suit this morning, or this afternoon for that matter, is Providence-based Higgins Cavanaugh Cooney. To conclude, copies of our local and national press releases regarding today's announcement, as well as several copies of the acting law actual lawsuit, are available for your convenience. There are packages over to here to my right, to your left. Um, and now, if uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions, uh, if you want to provide your name, media affiliation with your questions, I'd be happy to, to answer any questions. So fire away. Chris, why isn't the Rhode Island Trucking Association a plaintiff? Uh, we we is essentially are a plaintiff indirectly as as the uh, we're not a named plaintiff, but through our affiliation uh, as the Rhode Island exclusive affiliate of the ATA, we're in fact part of this. But uh, ATA, uh, this is more of a carrier. Uh, this is more based on damages to specific carriers. That's why they're a carriers based 
in this claim as opposed to the Rhode Island Trucking Association. So you're basically a member of ATA. I'm sorry? So you would, would, we're, we're, we're the ATA? exclusive affiliate exclusive of the American affiliate. Trucking Associations. <laughs> so it really didn't, uh, we didn't need to be named in the, uh, in the suit. Why, just the carriers. And why Cumberland Farms? Uh, why are they a defendant? And did, did they provide any commentary or comment on well, this? Well, Cumberland Farms will probably provide their, their insight, but clearly they represent the type of carrier that is, is uh, moving through the state to further their business and, and to, to deliver fuel and the products that they retail. Uh, I think uh, from one of our other narratives, uh, uh, Cumberland Farms uh, certainly uh, being on every street corner within Rhode Island and around New England, uh, they're concerned about the, uh, as we've uh, stated, the uptick in retail costs from everything that we uh, we buy fuel there, we buy our coffee, our newspapers, the journal, as you know, just went up 50 cents. Uh, Cumberland Farms is clearly concerned as a retail establishment uh, what these costs are gonna gonna do to them, but they they represent just one facet of a an entity whose costs are going to be adversely affected, uh, and certainly that's going to be passed on to the consumer. Do you know if they have already raised prices after the implementation of truck tolls in June? I can't speak to that. Sir, have you read the RIDOT statement saying they expected this, but it's bringing up revenue that they wanted this to go forward? I'm sorry, Crystal, one more time. <laughs> have you read the RIDOT statement they just released saying that they expected this lawsuit and also they are content with the amount of revenue this would bring in? Okay, um, I have not heard the, the uh, I, I did hear uh, something on PRO just a short time ago. I haven't read or heard the specific statement. I, I concur that they knew this was coming. Um, as far as their truck counts, uh, that's going to flesh out inevitably. I've, I've heard uh, good evidence that the truck counts are around in the 4,000 range, which falls far short of what it's going to take to make this whole plan solvent. And why not sue the state of Rhode Island as a whole or Governor Raimondo? It looks like just Director OBD is named. Uh, that's, that's uh, you know, uh, Steph, that's really a legal decision. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I imagine this is a powerhouse firm with the uh, with the capacity to make these decisions, I have to think that that's the proper party to sue the Department of Transportation, who uh, who put this this unconstitutional scheme together in the first place. The lawsuit focuses a lot on out of state mm -hmm. um, trucks yep. and how they're going to be affected. Sure. Can you talk about that a little bit? Why, right. why do you think this is particularly tough? Well, about it, I mean, I, as I alluded to in my comments, uh, you don't have to go further than look at three years of comments from the people that that put this out there, namely. Governor Armando, Speaker Mattiello, and the right-out director that we, they sold this plan to Rhode Islanders on the basis that we're going to protect our own, we're going to target the bad guys out of state that are using our roads uh, unfairly, not contributing, we're going to target them to pay for our roads. You can't do that. You can't, you can't take the free interstate and pervert it and manipulate it for your own personal gain or your state's gain. They have blatantly said throughout the three-year process that they're going after the interstate trucks and, there's not, and they're going to protect their own. The, the daily cap is one such glaring example of that. A truck that goes from New York to Boston, travels 46 miles north, 46 miles south, will incur 20, once this comes to fruition, will incur 20, $20 north and $20 south. Yet a truck traveling throughout the state, unbridled, under the hours of service, 12 hours a day, could could use one hundreds upon hundreds of miles of use road use, incur hundreds and hundreds of dollars of tolls. Yet they would be capped at forty dollars. So they've they've throughout this whole uh, bill, they have they have overtly included protections for local business, and that is unlawful according to the Constitution. Are you know if you're going for a preliminary injunction or a stay that's or not, something? That's like not that. part of this, and uh, I can only say that they, that's part of the, the bigger legal strategy that uh, the ATA litigation team and uh, Mayor Brown will decide upon. But they haven't said anything? Because that would be something that would presumably stop the tolls immediately while the merits of the case are correct, decided. Correct, correct. I, don't I can't know say if that that's forthcoming right. I, I, yeah, at this point. But they are looking for it. It does say they're taking an injunction, but that's after. Yeah, I don't know that what's in there is the actual formal formal separate injunction, but it does ask them as part of the as part of the plea and remedy and prayer that they that they cease this. Are you do you fear at all that by filing this lawsuit and saying it's unfair to only target trucks, 
that the result of the lawsuit would be that everyone would be told and that's not, not unfortunately that's the carelessness and recklessness of our established lawmakers they've been told this for three years that inevitably our 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 goal from day one was to protect the interests of trucking our leaders have been warned that a victory by trucking saying that truck only tolling is unconstitutional could lead to tolls for all Rhode Islanders that's unfortunately the reckless side effect they've been made well aware of that that is very likely to happen if we prevail that they will have to pivot they will have to go down further to different truck sizes therefore uh, pivoting and, and not following through on an honor that that they said to the Rhode Island business community we would not toll straight uh, trucks which by the, the way are the, the, are the, are the heaviest trucks uh, inevitably I think a loss by them is gonna is gonna cause uh, some real ripple effects and go down and of course we have we have legislation that uh, that says that they will not go to cars but if you've already gone down you've got contracts you've got infrastructure built uh, it serves to only serves to reason that you're gonna you're gonna pull cars in so again that's uh, as a citizen of Rhode Island with with children and, and bills to pay uh, yeah I'm concerned that it's going to go down to cars but in my capacity of, as you know the leader of this association and in ATA's capacity to protect the interests of trucking that's again just a reckless uh, uh, spoils of war that uh, we might all feel the pain of this if we prevail. Are trucks avoiding 95 in South County to avoid the tolls? We understand, and I don't have any hard statistics, but we understand that uh, there there's quite a bit of uh, road diversion uh, through Northern Rhode Island, uh, through uh, onto Route 1, uh, up through Westerly and Charleston. Uh, I know there's been some uh, attempts to um, prevent that diversion. We understand that local community and DOT are attempting to collaborate on, on some of the restrictions, which are, again are another another attempt at uh, violations of of, uh, of our right to use these roads. But uh, I think there's I think I think there is some that's only going to grow more acute, Patrick, as this network comes to fruition. And my point is, if they're right now they're paying collectively six seventy five each way. Uh, and there's any any amount of diversion that's only going to go get higher and higher and higher as this as these new gantries start being added as we head north on 295 and 95. If you prevail in this lawsuit, um, the roadworks plan would lose about 10 percent of its funding. Mm -hmm. What is your recommendation for how to pay for that that extra funding? Our recommendation echoes the American Trucking Association's recommendation and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's recommendation. And it's our recommendation and our offer back in 2015. And that's let's go with an equitable fuel tax increase. We offered 19 cents. The American Trucking Associations and the uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce are uh, offering somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 cents uh, on, the, on the national gas tax. Um, this, that's the most equitable way to fund this. Tolling, truck, we're certainly against truck tolling. The tolling itself, we lose 25, 30 percent of every dollar out to a out to a wasteful in industry, for for infrastructure, back office, uh, you know, chasing down uh, leakage is what they call for uncollectible tolls. For the gas and fuel tax, you've already got the infrastructure in place. Um, you lose about one percent of every dollar to to the overhead. Yet you collect about 99 cents. That goes directly into into, uh, into infrastructure. Do you want just the diesel tax up by 19 percent? No, I think well, right, right. We offered we offered the governor 19 cents and some fee re in, in increases way back in 15. That situation has evolved nationally about as the the you know the the establishment uh, the Trump administration looks at the infrastructure situation. Now ATA and U.S. Chamber have, have chimed in and both favor along with us a fuel tax increase. Oh, I just wonder if it was just the diesel tax or was the well, they, 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 that th those models do uh, do reflect a, an across the board tax okay. both on diesel. Our offer three years ago, which by the way would have put, would have probably resulted in about, by now about 45 million dollars in revenue from our 19 cent offer along with some fees. Uh, that's money now that's that's gone out the window so it's uh, not only we are we in a lawsuit now but we've we failed to capture the offer of a, a very viable industry that wanted to be a partner and unfortunately we've gone down this road
Can, can I just chime in? Yeah. In the three years that we've been, the podium? Yeah, sure. in the three years that we've been debating this, the DOT has gotten, I think, an extra forty million dollars in its budget. Its budget is now five hundred and ninety million dollars. In addition to that, a couple of years ago, three years ago, I think it was maybe four, we indexed the gas tax to inflation. So every year, from now until forever. DOT will be getting more and more money just from the regular gas tax. They never needed tolls. They never needed them from trucks. They certainly don't need them from all vehicles. Um, $590 million is a lot of money. It has grown, and it will continue to grow just with what's in place now. Any other questions? I know you're not the, you know, the lawyer <laughs> behind this suit, but have they mentioned, like the ATA mentioned, any precedents, any big cases where tolls or anything similar was was tossed on Commerce Clause grounds or anything they've, you're they've looking at? They've baked and woven uh, case precedents throughout the suit. If you, once you look at it, I'm sure you'll find some, some comparative broad stroke Commerce Clause type protections that, that, uh, that fortify our position. All set? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank Appreciate you. it very much.